Hello, I'm Nicholas Bonsack, President and Head of Portfolio Strategy for Strategus, Baird's Investment Strategy Arm. It's good to be back with you. What a week it was. As the third quarter drew to a close, two stories dominated the headlines. First, we saw some welcome strengthening in the equity market to close the month after a sharp sell-off through much of September, and more on that in a minute. And second, Tuesday brought the first presidential debate of this year's election cycle. Now, irrespective of your politics, it's important in our view to frame the debate and its impact on the election in three ways. One, as a discussion on the broader, often more divisive issues with longer-term societal implications. Two, the shorter-term implications on the economy and the recovery, that is, those items that are inside our immediate investment window. And three, to remember that the qualitative outcome is in the eye of the beholder. Remember when Nixon looked a little under the weather and showed some perspiration on his brow during his debate with Kennedy in 1960? Our parents talked about that for a generation. But that night, listeners on the radio thought Nixon had Kennedy beat. So looking through the noise of this year's first debate, and there was a fair amount of noise, much of what we thought going in is true coming out. Incumbent presidents generally do quite poorly in the first debate of their re-election year, and this is quite simply because they don't prepare as well as their opponent, so they're effectively living the job. And few people in the presidential echo chamber speak to them in quite the same way that their opponent does on the debate stage. This was true for President Ronald Reagan in 1984, as it was for President Obama in 2012. Also, expectations were rather low for Vice President Biden this year, and this was partially due to the President's own framing of his opponent as much as it was to Biden's performance in the crowded Democratic primary debates earlier this year. It's a little surprise the former Vice President was able to clear that hurdle easily. So all in, we're not surprised to see the Biden-Harris ticket getting a bump in the polls. Historically, sitting presidents dropped two points after the first debate, and that seems to be playing out again this year. More importantly are the implications for investors, and at the top of that list is the status of fiscal stimulus negotiations. We continue to believe that allowing the fiscal support policies passed last spring to expire poses the single largest risk, outside the virus itself, to the health and durability of the recovery, which indeed remains fragile. Despite some positive comments from the Speaker of the House, the White House Chief of Staff, and the Secretary of the Treasury this week, we still have our suspicions whether a deal will get done before the election. With the number of big company layoff announcements rising, however, the call for both sides of the aisle to get something done will no doubt intensify. And with this in mind, investors should appreciate both the persistent unevenness of the recovery and the likely increase in election-related market volatility as we chop through more debate, stimulus negotiations, a Supreme Court nominee, and the potential for a contested outcome. But because we know all of this, the sharp drawdown in name you know new economy shares at the start of the month and the indiscriminate selling that followed mid-month did not turn into a March-like retest of our conviction. In fact, the general trend appears to be improving as society learns to live with the virus, and we view this as at least moderately bullish. All the things considered, the interchange between the ebb and flow of the virus, the prevalence of point-and-care testing, scientific news on vaccine development, and the success and failure of geographic reopenings will likely continue to dictate returns near term. So while it's important to always work with your Baird Financial Advisor for the direct implications on your portfolio, as we highlighted last week, we remain comfortable with an above benchmark allocation to equities while pursuing a gradual repositioning within equities as a durable economic recovery develops. Let's leave it there for now, and we thank you for your time. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Please let us know how your Baird team can be of assistance, and have a wonderful weekend.